work and what did it get me? Guess who says she's found Jesus? Guess who's a little reformed 304? Guess who's ready to be a trad wife? This girl, Nala. Now if you're anything like me, or you have at least two brain cells to rub together, you're at least a little skeptical of this. There's this huge fight all over Twitter for the past two or three days over whether or not this girl actually came to Jesus. Because this is the strategy that some modern women will pull, right? They come to a point in their life where either they're getting older or, you know, they just feel that their party days are behind them and they understand that their biological clock is ticking or they just have that urge to settle down and have a child. So then suddenly they become a Christian woman. So what if she's got a little past, am I right? She's got a heart of gold, and she's on fire for the Lord. Wait, your biggest fantasy is... Cheating. Not even cheating. my biggest, it's like one of my fantasies. Before any loser trad cons who may happen to be watching this video get on my case for questioning this woman's testimony, I will remind you that in the Old Testament there are literally laws against women lying about and downplaying their pasts. This is an issue which the Lord God does not take lightly. But before we really get into making fun of anyone, let's see what she has to say for herself. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so really quick, I have a couple things to address and I just need you to listen to me. So I've had quite a few people reach out to me, comment, you know, just truly curious about what and why I changed. So, so listen, I was a pastor's kid for almost all my life. I grew up in church. I was always in church. You know, I was also homeschooled. So my life truly felt like a cage. And I'm not saying Christianity is a cage. I'm saying religion was the cage. I was a Baptist, you know, I was a Baptist pastor's child for the longest time, right? Me and my family did not have a good relationship and I'm the middle of five children. So I'm talking about my other brothers and sisters and my parents. It just truly felt like such a cage. I was a very rebellious child, like sneaking out when I was like 16 years old. I was like, I was just going the wrong way, right? So... About four years ago, I started my OnlyFans because I think truly it was out of pure rebellion. And tr and like, honestly, I'm such a like independent person that I never felt the need for a man to provide for me, like have a man in my life to provide for me. Um, so I started OnlyFans about four years ago and I climbed to top 0.01%. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that the devil can truly give you things in this life. He has a budget though. He can only go so far. So a couple million, okay, great. The devil can do that sometimes, right? But I truly have gifts and talents. I just did not use them in the right way. Does looking like you belong in a brothel count as a talent? And I'm reaching out to anyone who's like questioning what they should do in their life. And I turn to corn. That's what we're going to call it, okay? So this is just me sharing my personal, personal experience with you. So I reached out and did corn for four years. Um, and I showed myself all over the internet. I said crazy things on podcasts. If you don't know the I Love Cheating podcast. Um, and so I met this person who's now my partner. And there we go. She met a man. That's who pulled her out of this lifestyle. That's really what this is all about. And he truly showed me God's love. He was sending me Bible verses, praying over me, and we were just friends. So like the Holy Spirit was truly working and moving, but I was in such a rebellion against it because I was like, God doesn't love me. I've had to work this hard for this many years because no one cared about me. My family didn't care about me. Christianity is a cage. It's not Christianity. It's religion. Religion is the cage. And unfortunately, I didn't have like good role models growing up. My parents, my siblings, I didn't have good friends. 
I truly fell into darkness and I was, like I said, I was top 0.01% creator. Like that is crazy. That is a crazy milestone to reach in that industry. So I made what I made. I did what I did, but I want to share you, share with you guys the truth of it all, because I am now giving it all up for Christ. I am now truly a believer. I would never take it back. God radically saved me from this darkness and let me tell you again, the devil has a budget, but God does not. Okay, one, with an audience like that, a subscriber count that high that she's 0.01% or whatever, she could probably start this back up at any time with no problem. So I don't know how much she's actually giving up here. Doesn't seem like it's a whole lot. And two, either her biological clock is ticking, apparently she's 26, I know that's not necessarily that old for a woman, but still, the wall is approaching. Maybe she senses that. Uh, and also, maybe this other guy who's in her life now, she, something about her feels that he can provide a more stable and better income for her. Maybe she senses that whoever this guy is who's interested in her, he's about as good as she's going to be able to do, given her actions, choices, and reputation. God literally made you he made this world he made the heavens like what makes you think that god can't bless you with anything but the devil will give you these things that trip you up and money in front of your face and these worldly friends your family that doesn't isn't there for you you know but don't be discouraged because god has a better plan for your life and let me tell you, I have felt and started living that plan. And since then, the money, the fame, the Gucci, Louis, whatever bags, the shoes, the clothing, the huge trips that I've taken doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? And my soul, I'm sorry, but it's not worth going to hell for at all. And God loves you so much that he's willing to give you everlasting life. You need to understand that your life is very temporary here on earth and we all have a mission and that's to preach the word of God. Okay. I love you guys. I just wanted to clear that up and share a little bit of my testimony, but there you have it. Please be nice in the comments because just remember you are not here to judge others. God is here to judge, not you. So please, please be nice, be kind, be loving, Bear the fruits of the spirit. I love you guys. I love you so much and God bless. Oh no, don't judge me. Only positivity in the comments. No, 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 no. I know this is a very sudden and abrupt change, but I swear it's genuine. Like it's been this and another TikTok where she mentions that there's some new guy in her life who has clearly had a significant influence over this conversion that she's undergone. Actual conversion in the West is pretty rare these days and usually it does happen because you become involved with another person who's a part of a different religion. Or you're just turning to the church out of complete desperation, one or the other. But part of what caused the big controversy online is the fact that you had a ton of red pill people calling BS on this, and then you had a bunch of trad cons defending her. The cool Christian engineer says, Bruh, Paul was literally persecuting and deleting Christians from this world, but God's grace isn't enough for an OF girl. Bro, Paul had something to lose and he was martyred for his faith. Don't compare her to him. You know, this is the type of stuff that makes me embarrassed to even be associated with this religion. For me to say that I'm a follower of Jesus and then this man says, Oh yeah, I'm also a Christian, bro. Why in all of these tweets that I've seen on Twitter, X, whatever, has no one actually analyzed the calculus that's going on here? In her decisions and in the decisions of the guy she's apparently in a relationship with. Why, why haven't we gotten into that? Because you see all these allegedly trad women making these tweets going, Oh, why are these men so angry? Why are we getting so much hate? We never said you had to marry her. What's going on here? 
You know, and I understand that a lot of the videos I make are intended to generate clicks and stuff like that, but when it comes to stuff like this, these women's opinions aren't worth addressing, they're not worth arguing with, because if you argue with stupid people, you become stupid yourself. And we all know they're just basically trying to make excuses for Nala, whether they'll admit that or not. Women are gonna run cover for their own, and I bet you most, if not all, of these girls have a past too. And really, a defense of one is a defense of all. They're defending themselves as much as they're defending Nala. You know, your average woman, even if she hasn't behaved in as extreme a way as Nala has behaved, still has the same 304 mentality here in the West. She still has a past, right? Like, a woman is really supposed to be a virgin until marriage, and the percentage of women who are living like that today is negligible. Even in rural communities in this country where people naturally label themselves as Christians, a girl has usually had at least two or three boyfriends, and maybe as many hookups. Really what people should be talking about, what's truly important here, is the decisions that both of these people are making. You know, the, the risk that this man is taking on in dating a woman who has said the things that Nala has said publicly, who has behaved in the way that Nala has behaved publicly. This man is taking on a huge amount of risk in dating her. I cheat all the time. Are you a cheater? Yeah, <laughs> uh, repetitively. Unfortunately, I get bored. Uh, it's not that the partner's not good enough. It's that I'm bored. Mm -hmm. I constantly want new things. I am like constantly on the lookout for like something that's going to just spark me. Yeah, but doesn't that mean that you just don't like the guy? Shouldn't you just break up with him then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I don't because you know what? I'm at least getting somewhere. But then the and other I person kinda, gets uh, Sometimes I do on. have feelings. Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is the thing. They'll never find out that they're being cheated on. I'll just break up with them. No, I'm dead serious. They'll never fucking find out. You just said. So you'll cheat and then break up. Yeah. But you could just break up and then just And then just fuck, fuck. whoever you want. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But the cheating is like, it's a fantasy. So it's like, oh, this is exciting for me to cheating. cheat. Because it's actually cheating. If I break up with him and then I go fuck someone, it's just a rebound. No, I mean, I get it. I get Nala. it. You should get it. I mean, most Nala. people cheat. Everybody yes, I think a, reg. I think a lot of people Christ. cheat. Jesus Christ. Just break up with something mean. Just break up with the dude. Yeah. What? That's not mean. That's not mean. How is it mean if <laughs> they never find out about it? Is it real? Is it for shock value? Honestly, it doesn't matter. Nala is a walking red flag. Even if she is professing to now be a believer in Jesus and to have changed her ways. It doesn't matter. This is a bad decision to get into a relationship with this woman. Okay, so if I knew this man in person and he was telling me that he was interested in a woman who has a track record like Nala has, I would be like, man, this is a humongous red flag. You do not want to do this. I would ask him, really, bro, what head are you thinking with? Really, like, wh what's actually honestly going into this decision? He sounds pretty religious. I bet he's probably saving himself for the right woman. And I would have to ask him, do you really think this OF girl is the woman you're meant to spend the rest of your life with? Like, seriously. That's what you're telling me right here, right now. For Nala, on the other hand, this is a very good decision on her part. Because now she's found some man who wants to take care of her and provide for her and uh, for some reason doesn't believe that she's a bad person and wants to spend the rest of his life with her. This is her ticket to regain her purity, quote unquote, before things get a whole heck of a lot harder.
I'm not one to throw around the word sacrilegious a lot, but this TikTok just feels wildly inappropriate in a spiritual way. And it's also worth mentioning that for a little while there was a controversy over whether or not she'd even deleted her OF account. Tradcons were pumping their fists in the air when she finally did, but it was really kind of touch and go there for a moment. And of course, the allegedly trad women online had to use the usual shaming tactics on men who actually tried to verify whether or not she changed her ways. I mean, isn't it crazy that the page was still up while this whole conversation was going on? She didn't shut it down and then come out as a Christian. She came out as a Christian and then shut it down like the next day. But there was another video as well, so what we've seen so far isn't all Nala has to say. So. Let's see what other comments she has to make and see what her observations about the world are. You guys need to understand something right now. And it's so important for you to know and understand what's going on in the world right now is not a coincidence. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back with a sword. You know, this world is getting darker and darker. You see it on the TV. You hear it in the music, when you go to concerts, when you're just out and about, there is evil and darkness surrounding us right now. Anyone else feel like the message is discredited when it comes out of her mouth, or is that just me? Do you think this is genuine, or is she just repeating the politics of her new boyfriend? And you're gonna tell me that all of these worldly things that are temporary, we don't live that long. We could go out and unalive tomorrow. You're gonna tell me that that is more important than your eternal soul being spent together in heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you so much and that's why he sent his son to die on the cross for your sin and for my sin. You know, like Paul says in the Bible, I am the chiefest of sinners. I couldn't feel more far from that. I am a chief of sinners because of my past, because of this world, because of the relationships I've had. I never put God first in any of it. But let me tell you, we don't have a lot of time. There are signs in the skies and signs within our generation. Things going on are not just a coincidence. God is saying he is coming back. It has been prophesied in the Bible. Does anyone else feel kind of weird that she's doing this with like the exact same face and makeup that she had on when she was on whatever podcast? You need to understand this is so serious. I'm not just one of these Bible thumpers. I fully believe in Jesus. He radically saved me. And I say that because I was such a sinner. I never thought that was possible, but it is. It does not matter what you have done or said or believed. You could be an atheist, you could be a murderer, you could be whatever you in your mind think is the darkest pit. God wants you. He created you. You're such a beautiful thing to Him. But you need to repent. You need to understand that God loves you and wants you to spend eternal life with Him in heaven. He does not want to send you to hell. So please, please know that you have time right now to accept Jesus in your heart and change your future. I love you guys. God bless. I really don't like the emotionalist nonsense that goes along with a lot of Christians. You know, they'll, they'll look at you and they'll be like, oh man, just believe, bro. Just have this idea in your head and everything will be fine. Faith is more than just saying, intellectually, I agree that this thing happened, okay? And at this point in my life, I am really and truly done with hearing other alleged believers in Christ virtue signal over stuff like this. Like, if Christianity, if, if Christians were actually functioning the way God wanted them to function, we would not have the problems that we see in the West today. The left would not exist. Every other woman wouldn't be a 304 you'd still be able to buy a house, okay? Like, obviously, even the so-called conservatives are doing this religion wrong. So my message to any man watching is this. Don't get caught up in the emotionalism of people 
changing labels and redefining themselves and having these come to Jesus moments. Remember, what's in it for them? What's in it for you? What risk are you taking on when you're getting involved with a woman like this? And what does she have to gain from being in a relationship with you? People still operate on incentive. Don't let the rose-colored glasses of whatever denomination you may happen to be a part of get in the way of you seeing that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share it. Follow me on Twitter. And Red Channels will catch you in the next one.